Hi, I'm Michaela from the blog Michaela Creates. Welcome back to my sewing room. If you're new here, welcome. I share sewing tutorials here on my YouTube channel and on my blog. Today I want to share with you some really fun and quick sewing projects that you can make with either scrap fabrics or just some beautiful prints that you have lying around in your fabric stash. Um, I definitely know that I have quite a few small pieces that I wouldn't be able to make garments out of. So these types of projects are really fun and it's a really great way to get uh, your favorite prints around your home if you're making uh, really cool homewares. These little crafty sewing projects are really fun to sew after work if you're just wanting to wind down and de-stress or just for fun on the weekend. There will be a few free patterns available today as well so that just makes it a bit easier and quicker for you to be able to make these fun sewing projects and you'll be able to get these patterns on my website and I will leave a link in the description box below on how you can find those. So today I've been really in inspired by some of the op shopping trips that I've been on recently and I found some really beautiful vintage cotton fabrics. So let's start sewing and I will share with you what projects we're going to be making. So I just recently painted my sewing table this really beautiful blush pink and I'm so excited about it so I just thought I would quickly share with you guys my new sewing space I still need to organize all of the bits and bobs to go underneath but I'm super happy with this so the first sewing project I'm going to share with you today is how to make a bow tie scrunchie so you can download this free sewing pattern on my website it is linked in the description box below So I've just grabbed my basket of scrappy fabrics um, and I'm just going to have a look through to see what I think um, I want to use. Okay, so I managed to find all of these little pieces of pink linen fabric. Um, I think that what I'm going to do is try to make one of the projects out of it, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to give these fabrics a little bit of a press to make them sit nice and flat. So I've finished pressing um, my fabrics and so the first project that I'm going to make is the bow tie, um, the scrunchy bow tie and you can get the pattern on my website um, and I'm going to use this really cute cotton fabric here. I just think that the print and the colours are really lovely. Okay so you want to grab the fabric you're using for your bow scrunchy and then um, you want to grab your pattern pieces so I've got them both here. Um, and the bow you want to cut two of these so we're going to make a pair and then for the scrunchy piece just one You will need to cut a piece of elastic about 5 inches long. So I'm going to start off with my bow ties and I'm going to pop them right sides together. And I'm just going to pop in some pins around the outside. I'm just going to start to sew with a foot width seam allowance. You just want to leave a small opening so that you're able to turn this through to the right sides. So once you have sewn your bow together, you just want to cut a few nicks down the curved edges. And this will just help it to turn through really nicely. once you've done that you can start to turn through the ties through the little opening so 
So I'm just going to give my bow tie a quick press with my iron to get it sitting really nice and flat. So I'm just going to set my bow tie aside and now I'm going to sew up my scrunchie piece. So what I'm going to do is fold it to the right sides together lengthwise. And I'm just going to sew down this edge with a quarter inch of foot width seam allowance. Grab a safety pin and then you just want to turn it through to the right sides. Now you can grab your piece of elastic and pop in the safety pin to thread it through the scrunchie. Once I get it into the scrunchie, I just want to pin it on the end here so that it doesn't get pulled all the way through to the other side. And then you can just start to scrunch up the fabric. So now you can pull out the pin and hold on to the other end and you can pull out the safety pin and you can knot these together. So now what we're going to do is pop this side here inside of this edge. Okay, so now we're just going to sew up the seam here. So now you should have something that looks like this. Um, all you need to do is grab your scrunchie bow and pop it around where the seam is and tie it into a knot. Next I'm going to make a fabric bookmark. So I've got this really cute vintage fabric here that I want to use. And then I've also got a lightweight interfacing as well. So I'm just going to use about half of this piece here, um, which is about seven and a quarter inches. So I think, I mean, just work with what you've got if you're using scrap fabric, but I'm just going to roughly cut this at about seven and a quarter inches. And I'm going to make this into a rectangle just by kind of eyeballing it really. Something along the lines of that. And that is about two and a half inches wide. So what I'm going to do is just cut this off like that. So now that I have my rough shape, I'm just going to make it a little bit more square. I'm just going to cut it in half. Like so, and then I've got these two pieces here to work with so what I'm going to do is just cut some interfacing and I'm going to interface these to make it a bit thicker. Okay so now I'm just going to give these a quick pressed So now these are both really nice and pressed and I'm just going to fold them together right sides and pin around the edges. So I have got my two pieces here for my fabric bookmark and what I also have is just a piece of lace that I've cut. Um, I've cut it quite long so that when it's sitting in my book it's kind of hanging over and looks a bit pretty. Um, probably be sitting on my bookshelf so I just thought that that would be quite a nice touch. And so what I'm going to do is just pin it to the inside like this and then we're going to pop the other piece on top and sew around these edges here. Off 
so you just want to give this a quick press to get it sitting nice and crisp and then we're just going to do a, a top stitch or like an edge stitch around the edge of it to close up the hole and to also just add some really pretty detail. Now I'm just edge stitching around the bookmark and then I'm going to do a zigzag detail stitch along the front of it as well. So the next quick sewing project that I'm going to make is some covered buttons. So you can just buy these little covered button kits and you can choose what size buttons you want to buy. I will leave some links in the description box below where you can find them. But essentially what you do is you use little bits of fabric and you cover the buttons and you press them together. Um, to hold the fabric in and then you have your own custom buttons and I just think that these are really pretty especially when you have beautiful um, prints or you're wanting to match your buttons to your dress or your garment that you're making um, so all you need is honestly the tiniest piece of fabric and so what you need to make sure is that it's going to wrap around and um, kind of fold inside of here a tiny bit so it will need to be a little bit bigger than your button size and I'm just going to cut around so that I have quite a good amount of space around the button these are really great to use up the smallest pieces of fabric as well so once you've cut out a square shape just kind of fold it over your button and make sure that it's definitely going to be able to fold inside. Now you can see that I have quite a lot of excess fabric there so what I'm going to do is just cut around here where the corners meet because that's a lot of excess fabric that we don't need. So what I'm doing here is just popping my button on top of the fabric and I'm just going to grab this little piece here and pop my button and fabric inside. Try to get it as even as you can when you push this in because this is how your fabric will sit. So now you can see it's kind of bunched it all up and it's basically made a really tight pull around the button to get a really nice fit. And then you have your second piece for your button and you just need to make sure that all of your fabric is bunched inside there and you just grab one of these backs of your button place it inside and then you grab the top part of the button maker and just push it in and you will feel that it has pushed into the inside of the button and it's holding the fabric inside and then you can slowly pull it out and then we have a perfect and very cute covered So this is the cupboard buttons all finished. Um, you can see that the backs have popped in and they've held the fabric and it's all nice and really smooth. Um, you can get these in all sorts of different sizes. So if you were making like a really pretty vintage dress or something like that and you wanted to pop lots of little cupboard buttons that match your fabric um, pattern or color down the front or whatever um, these are really great so these ones here are quite big um, but you can get all sorts of sizes so now I'm going to start sewing my bunting together I only managed to get about three pairs of buntings out of my fabric scraps but that's okay I just want it to hang above my sewing room and just add a little bit of cute detailing so I'm just going to sew around now this pattern has a quarter inch seam allowance if you do want to bag these out but I'm just going to match them together and sew around the outside so now I'm going to show you how to make a fabric bunting you can download this pattern from my website just like the other one there are links in the description box below so I'm going to use this really cute pink linen for my bunting hopefully Once you have your pattern piece cut out, um, just start to lay out your fabric scraps or your fabric and um, 
see how best you can fit the pieces in. So it will look a little bit like this, which I think is really nice. And then I'm going to get my pinking shears and cut around the outside edges. So now I've just got my um, vintage pinking shears here and I'm just going to start cutting around the edges to create a really nice Head in. cut out with my pinking shears um, I'm just going to use this pre-made binding here um, it's just like a really nice creamy color which I quite like um, the contrast of and so I'm just going to make a mini bunting and I'm gonna place it on my wall above my sewing space so it's just going to go up here um, and I just think it will look really nice and cute. I'm kind of happy with how this looks. Um, there's a wee gap in between which I think is quite nice and I'll just put the um, binding, measure it out like that to work out how long I want it. this is what my bunting looks like I've just kind of um, done a little bit of a gap in between and then I'm just going to continue sewing this close like the top here so now I'm just going to sew all the way along this binding edge um, to close off at the tops here Okay guys, so here's my little bunting up on the wall. I think it looks so cute in my little sewing area and it matches my freshly painted um, blush pink trestle table. I'm yet to put all of my sewing stuff on it, but I'm really happy with how this cute little bunting turned out. You could definitely add more flags and make it for a baby's room or your own sewing area. I just think it's very sweet and it's such a great way to use up small bits of fabric. So I hope that you felt inspired by this video and you've found some new and fun sewing projects that you can make, especially if you have scrap fabric. It's really great to use up all of the um, materials and equipment that you have lying around rather than throwing it in the bin. Don't forget that you can download the free patterns for some of these projects on my website and I have left a link to that in the description box below. If you have Instagram and you make some of these projects please tag me at Michaela Creates. I would absolutely love to see them and I also love to share these things with my sewing community. It's really great to help inspire each other and to learn new skills from each other. Thank you again for joining me in my sewing room.